The new trailer for the Jurassic World Netflix series Camp Cretaceous has just been released, and with it a whole lot of new info on what kinds of dinosaurs, plot points, and action we can expect to see in Season 4. Today we're going to be going over all of the information that was given out to Entertainment Weekly and discussing how it could possibly tie into the next movie in the franchise, Jurassic World Dominion. <laughs> Hey guys, hope you're all doing well. Now, to get right down to the point on everything, Entertainment Weekly just put out an article with an interview from showrunner Scott Kramer, which we're going to go into right now. Now, in both this article and the beginning of the trailer, we're shown that after the survivors escape Isla Nublar, hope is struck down when the Mosasaur swims up and attacks their boat. Then they find themselves stranded on a whole new island with even more threats. Speaking of the island, Scott goes into detail about that in the article saying, quote, I don't want to get too spoilery, but it is not Isla Sorna and it is not one of the five deaths. So I guess that rules out the whole idea of Site B coming up in Jurassic World Camp Cretaceous Season 4, although it more than likely will be referenced because the further we go down into this trailer, the more we learn about just how big the scope of the Jurassic World universe is really getting. But yes, it is confirmed this new island whatever it may be, is something completely separate. Scott said, quote, this is an island previously unseen in the Jurassic canon, which they also go on to mention that it's going to be cool figuring out what's going on, whereas usually we as an audience are ahead of what's, you know, happening in the show. Now, another thing that popped up here are these robots, which of course I was kind of skeptical because whatever that robot creature was in the picture that they put out a few days ago, I thought it looked very silly, but Seeing it in movement in the show, I guess it's some sort of robot dinosaur or Boston Dynamics contraption. I don't know, but the article goes on to say that the first bots we see are drones hurting a dinosaur, the same kind of drones we saw tailing the Scorpius Rex in season three. And if there are drones, that means someone's operating them. Scott says, I think what it comes down to is who and why. Those are some of the questions that we're going to start digging into. The trailer also finds the group interacting with a facility that appears to project different environments using holograms, from icy tundras to deserts. The tundra one in particular comes with a robot that happens to look like a dinosaur, at least that's what this article says. Scott Kramer confirms that this was something that came straight out of the writer's room. We've done 26 episodes of running away from dinosaurs and jungles, so what can we do that still feels like it's part of the story, but that changes things up, ups the ante, and ups the threat? It's almost like Darius mentioned in season three about the Scorpius Rex. They've only survived because they know how the dinosaurs are going to behave, or they know what this situation is. Now, thanks to the Mosasaurus, they've been thrown into this whole new world where they don't know why things are happening and who's behind it. Obviously, things are not good. So not only is it all the fear of dinosaurs and now robots, but it's also the fear of the unknown. Straight away, like immediately when I saw this trailer, the first thing that came to my mind was Westworld from Michael Crichton, the 1970s movie Movie he directed way back in the day. And I do think they're taking a little bit of inspiration from that and putting it into Jurassic Park. The other thing that came to my mind though was the whole holographic hologram technology, which now we know what that tease was from a couple of weeks ago. So that's interesting because I think that technology was actually inspired by Bryce Dallas Howard's work on The Mandalorian, which if you didn't know, the way they shot that show was by being in this giant room with huge screens all around the actors when they're acting, and it creates an environment. It's almost like you are there inside of this brand new landscape. Now, it's interesting that they've gone for that because that actually is kind of real world in a sense, especially if you put it in a Westworld sense. It might be a little more high tech than what I think, you know, is truly available. But yeah, I, I was pretty, uh, pretty surprised to see them do that. It is cool and it is something that I think will really be different going forward. I do want to know what exactly it means for the franchise though because I feel like it comes from The Mandalorian but it could be just be some kind of brand new idea they had all to themselves. Now another animal that we got to see in this teaser was actually the saber-toothed tiger which is really interesting because it's been something that's been teased ever since the original Jurassic Park with a little plushie that's inside of the visitor center but now we get like a, a brand new full cloned Smilodon 
Megalodon or whatever it could be in the Jurassic Park franchise. Scott Kramer says that he takes credit for it. He's now expanded this world where it's not just InGen, it's not just Biosyn, the company's trying to clone dinosaurs. There are people that are making these prehistoric creatures, so why would they necessarily stop at just dinosaurs? And I think that's really interesting. I We'll see how that plays out. It's very cool to see something like that brought into the show. I kind of wish it was in live action, but we're going to have to wait and see how everything plays out in the end. Now, between this and the dino robotics, the article asks Scott Creamer if this is teeing up things that we're supposed to see in Jurassic World Dominion. Creamer doesn't give specifics away, but he does say that we have our own corner of the franchise. It's completely rooted in the canon, but things that happen in our series inform things that happen in Fallen Kingdom, as well as the upcoming Dominion. And next up, we have to talk about the Spinosaurus. Now, this is a Spinosaurus that we haven't seen. We haven't seen an animal like this since Jurassic Park 3, and Scott Kramer said there's a good chance that it might just be the exact same Spinosaurus, which means somebody took this thing off of Isla Sorna and put it wherever they are at right now. So the article says that brings up another question, which Creamer himself asks aloud. Well, then why the heck is the animal in a desert? Because that's not a normal habitat for a Spinosaurus, just something for the fans to think about. Creamer always wanted to have a Spinosaurus on the show, noting that it's the largest carnivore land animal. But that doesn't necessarily mean that this Spinosaurus is going to be the main antagonist for season four. We've broadened out more, Creamer says. The Spinosaurus is definitely prominent in season four, but I wouldn't say it's our main antagonist. It's not our Toro or Scorpius Rex. Which leads me to the other dinosaurs that we've seen here, which is a Kentrosaurus fighting a Tyrannosaurus Rex, a very scarred Tyrannosaurus Rex that's getting messed about with by these drones. And I don't know if this is a male because it, it definitely looks green, but they call it a her in the show, which it could just just be that they don't know what they're talking about. I mean, I think it's very interesting that they have made this green T-Rex on a brand new location. It looks to be really cut up and scarred like it's been in a lot of battles. So I guess that leads me to believe that if it's not one of the T-Rexes from Isla Sorna, it's a brand new animal that they've either cloned or plucked from Isla Sorna that we didn't see in the Lost World of Jurassic Park 3. And yeah, they're, they're fighting a lot in this this new season. It was very ominous, it was very dark. I liked everything that I saw in the trailer, but I do wonder where exactly we're going from here because if this is not Isla Sorna, this is a brand new island where Manticore or somebody is doing some sort of experiments with the Spinosaurus from Isla Sorna, some robotic creatures and this big hologram Westworld style environment gives us a lot to think about. And personally, I think it's pretty cool, but hey, that's just what we know so far and what Entertainment Weekly has released publicly to the fans. So with that being said, I'm going to throw it all to you guys. Now, what do you think about the season four trailer? What was the standout for you? And what are your thoughts on where the series is going in the future? Whatever your own opinions and thoughts happen to be, I'd love to hear them in the comments down below. Now, before I go, I'd like to thank all of my game wardens, as well as all of my engine executives. I'd also like to thank all of my park workers and engine hunters as well. Guys, it really means the world to me that you all continue to support what I do, and I never want you to ever forget that. Now, I'd like to thank you all for watching today's video and hope that you all enjoyed the content. If you feel like I deserve it, I'd appreciate the like and hope that you'll consider subscribing if you're interested in hearing from me again. I'll see you all in the next video, guys, and as always, take it easy.